Welcome in everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can go from sums, Riemann sums, limits of Riemann sums, to integration. And this will be such a large time save just to be able to follow some patterns. Uh, so first I want to go how to set up integrals from sums, and then I'm going to go over properties of integrals. Like when you actually have these integrals, what do you do with them? What do they mean? Let's get into it. Expressing limits as integrals, and more specifically, a definite integral. For these exercises, you'll be given a limit of a sum on an interval a to b. Something like this. We have the limit as the partition p goes to 0 of the sum as k ranges from 1 to n of the function in terms of the variable c sub k times delta x sub k. And uh, what you need to do, uh, sorry, on the partition from a to b. And all you need to do in order to turn this into an, a definite integral is first, go ahead and write your integration sign. Use the partition uh, closed interval here to set your uh, limits of integration, a and b. Replace all of the c sub k's that you see in the expression up here with x's, and replace the delta x sub k with dx. I'll do a couple examples on the next slide. All right, top example here, we have the limit as the partition of p uh, approaches 0 of the sum as k ranges from 1 to n of sine of c sub k minus 14 c sub k plus 2, where p is a partition of uh, pi to 2 pi. So to answer this, uh, to turn this into a definite integral, you need to first write your integration sign. Go ahead and use that closed interval there. The first number will go into the bottom, the second number will go into the top of the integral there. From there, all you have to do is replace all of the c of k, c sub k's with x's. And I realize I'm forgetting the delta x sub k over here. And then you just uh, replace the delta x sub k with dx. There's your definite integral. For the other example down here, there's a similar looking limit, uh, but setting it up as an integral, a definite integral, is really not all that difficult. Come look at the, uh, the interval here. So the integral will go from 1 to 9 of 1 over 3 minus 4x to the fifth power, go ahead and replace your c sub k with an x. And then you replace the delta x sub k with dx. And that's all there is to it. In order to understand integration properties, you need to understand that one of the basic ideas of integration, definite integration, is that we're trying to find areas under a curve. Now, once you understand that, you mostly realize that areas are going to have a width along the x-axis and some kind of variable height. So the, the variable height is based on some function f of x. So let me go ahead and label that f of x. And um, we will end up ultimately be multiplying a width times some variable height to make sure that we can get the area exactly uh, as it is. When you understand that idea, then you can uh, go back and take a look at the definite integral of f of x dx from any number to that same number. This should be an interval along the x-axis. So if you start here and end here, and you say find the area of essentially what is a line, that has no area. 
So if you don't move from point A to anywhere else on the x-axis, you do not have a width to find your area. All right, next um, bit of integration property to understand is that uh, the bounds of integration that we use here, there are the limits of integration either way, we like those limits of integration to move left to right or from bottom to top. So if I start at A and move to B, I am moving left to right of f of x dx. But as you might know, within math, right is not the only horizontal direction you can move. You can also move left and you're allowed to move left. So I can write this integral here with these limits of integration swapped, but when that happens, you end up with the opposite answer. So when you swap the integration, uh, the limits of integration, the sign will change. And finally here, I want to make sure you understand that these areas, or maybe this large area, can be broken down into two smaller areas, or that you can combine two smaller areas into one large area, as long as they butt up next to each other. And you can see that if I start with the integral from a to b of f of x dx, that it can be broken down as the inter integral from a to c of f of x dx plus the integral from c to b of f of x dx. Now these two integrals over here are basically saying the area under the curve between a and c, these two points, this area here, plus the area from c to b, between these two points, this area here. If you add those together, you get the area from A to B, the whole thing. And of course, that makes sense. And this works for any value of C. So I could pick a C over here, I could pick a C over here, and it would still work. Let's take a look at what this looks like in action. All right, if the integral from negative 1 to 5 of f of x dx equals 9, and the integral from 2 to 5 of f of x dx equals 2, find what these are equal to. Well, the first example here, the integral from 2 to 2 of f of x dx is 0. Don't put too much thought into that one. If the limits of integration are the same, the answer is 0. All right, next, uh, let's see, the integral from 5 to 2 of f of x dx. Now, how can we relate this to either of these integrals up here? Well, it looks a lot like this one. It's just that the limits of integration have been switched. So in order to switch these limits of integration to put it in, into terms of something that you are given, we also would have to change the sign of that integral. So we can switch the limits of integration as long as we change the integral sign. All right, so we've done that. But now we know that the integral from two to five of f of x dx is equal to two. So this whole piece here just equals two, which means our answer is negative two. Last one. Uh, the integral from negative 1 to 2 of f of x dx. Okay, now this is a weird one because we don't have any integrals up here with negative 1 and 2 that are limits of integration. But we do have two other integrals that can help us get there. As long as you can remember, let's see here, yeah, it looks like these limits of integration go from negative 1 to 2, 
and these limits of integration go from 2 to 5. So if you look at these limits and connect them to these limits, it goes all the way from negative 1 to 5, which is what this integral has for its limits of integration. So we can do some work off to the side here. Maybe the integral from negative 1 to 5 of f of x dx equals the limit, uh, sorry, the integral from negative 1 to 2 of f of x dx plus the integral from 2 to 5 of f of x dx. So from here, all you have to do is substitute in a couple numbers, like this integral is 9, as given at the top here. This integral here is equal to 2 as given by what's at the top here. So let me do that. 2. So in order to solve for this integral, all we have to do is subtract 2 from both sides. So 9 minus 2 would be 7. And that makes sense. If you substitute 7 in for this entire integral, 7 plus 2 is 9. If the integral from 0 to 7 of f of x dx equals negative 4, the integral from 7 to 9 of f of x equals negative 2, and the integral of 0 to 9 from g of x dx equals 19, find these. And yes, I realize I did not put the dx here. Pretend it's there. So we have the integral for the first example here of 9 to 0 of 4 f of x dx. So now we have the introduction of a coefficient for the function. And that's fine. You can, uh, what I'm going to call, factor out the coefficient to the front of this integral. From here, it should be recognized that normally we want the smaller number on the bottom, the smaller limit of integration on the bottom. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. So in order to change these limits of integration, I'm going to have to go ahead and make this uh, sign different. So it's going to be negative 4 integral from 0 to 9 of f of x dx. And from here, you want to recognize that you can integrate from 0 to 9 by first going from 0 to 7 and then from 7 to 9. So this big integral is the sum of these two smaller integrals from 0 to 7 and 7 to 9. So if it's the sum of these two smaller integrals, we can just add these values together and get negative 6. So this entire integral here equals negative 6. So we're left with a negative 4 times negative 6, which is 24. Now for this final example down here, we still have to know the integral from 0 to 9 of f of x, uh, but this is the first example that has two different functions in it. So what are you supposed to do? Well, with the 3 in front of the g of x, you know you can factor it out. That's the constant multiple rule. You can factor it out to the front of the integration sign. But from there, you can also uh, use the sum or difference rule for integration uh, to more or less split this up. So the 3 would come out to the front. The integral from 0 to 9 of g of x dx minus, coming from that sign there, the integral of from 0 to 9 of f of x dx. And that is the sum or difference rule, in this case difference rule, that allows you to split up one big integration over many functions to smaller integrations, focusing on each function individually. Now we learned from back here that the integral from 0 to 9 of f of x dx is negative 6, so I can go ahead and just substitute that value in here. So this would be minus a negative 6. The 3 would come along for the ride here. And the value for the integral of 0 to 9 of g of x dx is 19. So I can substitute a 19 here. And then just simply uh, 
figure this out. 3 times 19 is 57. 57 plus 6 is 63. That's it for this video. I hope this video helps you out, and I wish you luck.